This is Larry Hayward, pastor of Westminster Presbyterian Church in Alexandria, Virginia. It's been a week ago today that America concluded our voting. And as I write and record this devotional on Sunday evening, November 8th, 24 hours after President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris have addressed the nation, I don't know if President Trump will have changed course from refusing to concede by the time you hear this. But in any case, it's nice that the election is over and at least for people pleased with the outcome and hopefully for others, there is a little less intensity in the air. Thinking about how much the election has dominated our thoughts and prayers, and perhaps even more so our nerves, I was led to consider that lives in our families, in all their everydayness, go on, even as national events draw more of our attention, at least on the news. The extended families from which Maggie and I come are different. Hers is large and spread out. Mine is quite small. In the days following the election, she learned of the death at age 96 of a first cousin once removed, her father's cousin, as I understand it, named Dr. Philip Lee, who was an assistant secretary of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare under President Lyndon Johnson, and who oversaw the establishment and implementation of Medicare in 1965. He went on to have a significant career in Palo Alto. At the same time, both of us had close relatives in the generation following us continue to deal with longstanding issues of addiction. Both Maggie's niece in her 40 was involved in a collision and received a DUI. And my son also in his 40s completed for the third time a treatment program in Florida where he now lives. In many ways, both her niece and my son bear witness to the sheer lifelong difficulty of shaking addiction. We also received the good news of the birth of our second grandchild, a grandson named formally with what is normally a nickname, Sonny, born to Maggie's son and daughter-in-law in Iowa, a child we hope to see after Christmas, depending on whether or not it's safe to drive there. And ironically, on Saturday night, I had a dream in which my mother appeared, the first time she's appeared in a dream to me since her death on Memorial Day a year ago. In the dream, it was beautiful to see her, but I knew that something wasn't quite right, that she wasn't supposed to be here. And I said to her, are you sure you want to come back to life? Aren't things better where you are? That's the last thing I can remember about the dream. And it's funny. And I even awoke with a slight smile on my face. I think it's the first time I've ever dreamed anything that actually caused me to laugh. What leads me to say all this is a minor aside I noticed in the news coverage of, yes, here we go again, the election. I noticed in a report that on the morning of the election, Mr. Biden had visited the grave of his son, Bo, the son whose deathbed pleadings seem to have motivated the now president-elect to run. He visited the grave again on Sunday morning as well. We all come from families of some sort, even those of us who do not know our biological or origins, but do know the people who helped us through however many years it took us to reach adulthood. Families are important. They can be fractious. They are complicated. They can be cruel and cold. They can be beautiful. 
They are the one entity we can never quite get enough of, but at the same time need to keep our distance from. We struggle to free ourselves from the less constructive aspects of our family while aspiring to live in the best parts, live into the best parts of those who have brought us into the world or nurtured us through it. Much of the Old Testament reads like family saga. Psalms wax eloquent about how good and pleasant it is when kindred dwell in unity, and indeed it is. Proverbs traces the rearing of a son from the naivety of childhood into the arms of a strong and capable spouse as an adult. As an adult. A spouse wise enough to marry someone who is wise. A son wise enough to marry someone who is wise. And in a tribute to the significance of family, the New Testament labels the church among many other labels it uses, the household of God. Now that the election is over, let's remember our nation, yes, but let's remember also our families. Amen.